Hey guys, what's up? This is my third time recording this. First time the footage was bad, second time the video file didn't get recorded, so hopefully this will come through. Um, the last video I made, I said, I made a quick little hint that I was going to make a special little video for my 1,000 subs, for reaching 1,000 subs. I'd make a special little video depending on if something had shown up in the, um, in the mail. And something has shown up. So I'll get to show it to you guys. It's awesome. Um, I've been dropping hints in some of my last videos on a new thing that was going to show up to the house. And um, if you guys have been paying attention, you know what it is. Um, it's, you'll see the hints in the videos I did where there wasn't actually any video footage, it was just a still picture. Um, so yeah, I'll get to show it to you guys. Um, and yeah, the other special thing I was talking about, the contest. Um, yeah, that is still in the works. I'll talk about that in my next video, uh, among other things. But um, yeah, just have to get this out the way. So yeah, let me show this to you guys real quick. It's, it's, it's freaking cool. Okay, here it is. It's in this really nice box. Care okay, to take a guess of what could possibly be in this really nice, that nicely decorated, really long box? Yep, it's a sword. I actually ordered this thing back in January of this year. Back when I actually had money. <laughs> I mean, these days I'm so freaking broke. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I ordered this back in January um, through a company called Jin Shi. Um, the reason why it took so long for the sword to get here is because it actually had to be made from scratch. It wasn't made before I ordered it. Um, the guy who runs Jin Shi, his name is Garrett Chan. He's um, beginning to be well known in certain. Um, you know, circles, um, Chinese, you know, weapon circles, um, and he's a really nice guy. I definitely recommend doing business with him if you're interested in getting, you know, um, swords like Chinese straight blades or Chinese sabers, you know, Zian or Dao. Um, I recommend, you know, he has awesome prices for what he sells. Um, he will work with you, um, answer any questions you may have. He has a website, which I'll put in the um, sidebar. And there's plenty of models that he's offering, but don't be afraid, you know, to, you know, discuss other options in case you happen to have another model in mind. He, he didn't really have this model on his site, and I was still able to get it. Um, but let me stop yapping and actually get on to showing it to you. Um, like I said, this is a really nicely decorated box, um, cloth covered. It's not made out of wood, though. I thought it would be made out of wood, but it's actually made out of, like, some hard cardboard or poster board or something like that, but it's durable enough. Um, it's lined with some really nice gold fabric. I don't think it's velvet. I'm not so sure what this is. It's top of a really nice nylon or something, but it's, I don't know what it is, but it's really nice. And it's, of course, you see this really nice cloth bag. It's the type of bag I normally see for Japanese swords, Japanese katana and such. Nice little gold cord, you know, keeping it together. So I'll untie it. I'll, I'll admit, I already opened this thing up and saw it. After all, I did make two other recordings besides this one, but I decided not to ruin the unraveling. You, you can act like this is the first time you know, it's been open. So, yeah. So, uh, there it is. This is the sword. Now, as I said, I've been dropping hints about the sword I was going to get, and if you've been paying attention, you should recognize this because I've had several pictures of this already on um, a lot of my videos with still images. This was a still image, if you remember, and here it is. This is the piece. Very beautiful. Got this for 300 just under $300. Beautiful piece of work. Right away, I can tell you that the fittings on here, beautifully made, and they're not cheap. You, these got some heft to it. These are some thick brass fittings. The handguard, the um, pommel. Um, the piece right in the end here, the sword hanger part here, it's, this, these were solidly made pieces. This is not some, you know, little light piece of crap that you can get at your local martial arts store or some place in Chinatown. This is some, this is some decent work. And look at the intricate detail on the handguard. I mean, that is just some beautiful work. Also on the pommel, um, if I could get that there. Yeah, let me look at that. Um, just beautiful work. 
I am planning on shining this a bit though. I mean, it looks good now, but I know if I, you know, I, I can get a really nice polish off of this, get a really nice, almost golden shine out of this. So uh, hopefully the next time you see this, it will look even prettier than it already does. The cord wrapping, pretty tight. Um, the fittings, securely fastened on. No, no shaking. You might hear a little bit of rattling in a scabbard. That really can't be helped, considering that the blade shape is narrower than the overall scabbard shape. So that was to be expected. But this is a minor annoyance, but nothing major. Um, but yeah, let me go into the... Oh, I also notice the wrapping on here. Nice and freaking tight. Very... This is not going to come loose for a while. And I don't know if you can see this because it's really, really dark, but you might notice that there are cross wrappings on the, um, actual, uh, not, it's not just spiral wrapped, but they also got little strings that are crossed. I like that because you might have noticed that this is a round sword hilt, round sword handle, um, which some people have expressed a concern with this design because it's, Gen are normally made with oval shaped or elliptical shaped handguards and it's usually I mean hand, um, handles and this part here is usually flat to core along um, you know to be parallel with that handguard and that helps a lot with blade alignment when you're making your cuts however because of the cross wrapping here just by feel just by the, the feel with your fingers on there you can tell where the edge is going to be so I like that design of course, talking about the edge, um, might as well get in with the blade. Oh, and by the way, some of you guys might be noticing how small the handguard actually is, which some people have seen as a detriment, and it can be, but considering the style of swordplay I like doing tends to keep them, you know, away from my hand, it doesn't bother me too much, and I wanted this design specifically because I wanted a nice, sleek, elegant-looking sword. This design helps with that. But yeah, you might have already noticed, look at the polish on this thing. Granted, there's a hell of a lot of oil on here, because it was shipped with a whole lot of oil just to protect the blade. I'm going to wipe off the excess oil, but notice the polish on this. This is a mirror freaking polish. Beautiful piece of work. Look at that. By the way, this is high carbon 1095 steel. This stuff can hold an edge. And I can tell you right now, just look at that. I don't know how well you can see the edge, but yeah. This is the real deal. This thing will hack a limb off. I am not kidding. Um, and the weight to this is just amazing. This is heavier than I'm used to, but not uncomfortably so. I wanted a heavier sword because I felt it was time I started practicing with the real thing. The swords I own, while they're well made, were made specifically for practicing purposes and for you know training forms and stuff like that. So they're lighter. They usually no, not much bigger, um, heavier than a pound. This is a bit over two pounds, but it doesn't really feel all that stressful on my wrist. There's a bit of a weight, but not too much so. And the balance is amazing. Look at this. I'm going to use the scabbard now to get it right out of its balance point. Whoops. Look where the balance is. Look where it is. Right there. That's a well-balanced freaking sword, okay? You might also notice how long the hilt is. It's longer than you normally see on, on um, Jin. This is normally a hilt that you would expect to see on a two-handed Jin. This is a... I, I wanted this blade to be 32 inches. I'm actually used to using swords that are 30 to 32 inches in just one hand. This is going to be no different despite the added weight. And by the way, the reason why it has the added weight is not just because of the brass fittings, but also because of the blade. This is some real live freaking steel, alright? This is, again, limb hacking sharp. Um, but the weight doesn't bother me because, like I said, I wanted, you know, I wanted the extra weight for training and to build up my forearms and I wanted to learn how to practice with the real thing. Um, but speaking of the length, normally most people, when they get gin, they like practicing with 28 inches, 27 inches. I'm used to, for some weird reason, I'm used to working with 30 inches and 32 inch blades. I almost got this at 34. But that would have definitely made this just a straight up two-handed. And I wanted to be able to wheel this with one hand as well as two with a little problem. This way, this is kind of like a, a nice compromise. Having it at 32 but having giving it a two-handed grip. 
because it it's it's just a nice little compromise between one-handed and two-handed use, and there are a couple of two-handed forms I wanted to learn. So I'll be able to do it with this, but still be able to do my one-handed forms with no problem. That's why I got it this way. And it's it's gorgeous. This is paper cutting sharp, by the way. I tested it out, and I'll be doing some videos later where I really put this thing through its paces. That will be the formal review I make for this sword. But I can tell you right now, first impressions, I'm loving it. It's just, I mean, look at that. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, hope you enjoyed looking at this piece with me, and I hope to do some more videos with this real soon. Catch you guys later.